The 18th element on the periodic table of elements is argon. This is Norris teaches science again. Sorry me, Miss Norris. This is a physical science edition video. Today we're going to talk about naming polyatomic compounds. So your goal is that I can name polyatomic compounds following its rules. I've done two previous videos about naming binary ionic and binary covalent compounds. And this is the third technique I'm going to talk about. There's a couple other techniques out there that I will not be covering because in my state, we do not cover those in this in this science, but you can always go find them on Google or other videos on YouTube. So what when you are naming polyatomic compounds, what's going to be in there is something called a polyatomic ion or polyatomic ions. This is a group of atoms that act as a single charged unit, and they're all covalent bonds. So you can see this example here. PO4 stays together and act as one. And then you will have a charge up here, and this has a negative three charge. That's its oxidation number. And that's going to come factor in when we start writing formulas. So you can look at some common polyatomic ions. I would take a moment, pause this, write these down. Um, major ones that we use in my physical science class, we use ammonium, uh, we use hydroxide, acetate, nitrate, sulfate, carbonate, phosphate, chlorate, all of these over here we usually use. And sometimes I bring in um, permanganate, sometimes, not all the time. Those are the ones that are commonly used in physical science um, in my class, but there are many other different polyatomic ions out there. So naming polyatomic compounds. So this means that there are three or more elements together. So when you're looking at the compound, if there's three or more different symbols, then you will have a polyatomic compound. And you're going to follow these steps. The first step is you're going to identify the polyatomic ion or ions. And how I do that is I usually box the polyatomic ion or ions. Then you're going to write the name of the first element if there is one. If you haven't boxed it, basically name the thing that you didn't box if it's there. Then you're going to write the name of the polyatomic ions, and then you're going to place it all together and rewrite it. There is no end changing when writing these. We do not change the ending of polyatomic ions. That is only when it's binary. So let's do two examples um, first, and then we'll, we may do two more afterwards. So this first one, we have to look. Are there three different symbols? I see one, two, three. They are. So the first step you do is you try to identify all the polyatomic ions are there. So I see here that there's um, NO3. NO3 is a polyatomic ion from my polyatomic ion reference sheet. And so I box it. So I know that's the polyatomic ion. The only one I see because you have to have at least two to have a polyatomic ion, and there's only three in here, three um, symbols. After that, we named the first element. What is K? K is potassium. And then the second step is you name the polyatomic ion. This way you refer back to the polyatomic ion reference sheet and you would find that NO3 is nitrate. You notice that most of the polyatomic ions ends in ATE. Then you combine together and the answer is potassium nitrate. Seems simple, right? Pause real quick. Try the second one. Did you try it? I hope you did, because I'm going over it now. So I look, I see three different symbols, so I know this is polyatomic ion. I'm comparing the symbols between there. Li3P is not a polyatomic ion. PO4 is, so I box it. Then we name the first one, and it's lithium. 
And we don't have to worry about this three here because it's not a covalent bond all the way and it's not binary. And then we name the polyatomic ion PO4 is phosphate. And your answer is lithium phosphate. All right, so let's do this one, these. Number three, this is where it's going to get a really interesting. All right, so first off, I see multiple symbols here, so it's definitely not just two, so it's polyatomic. The first step is we have to identify our polyatomic ion or ions. All right, so if we compare NH4, that's polyatomic ion, so we box that. And then the next one, OH, well, that's on our polyatomic ion sheet too, so we have to box that. So in this one, we have two polyatomic ions. The next step would be to name the first element, but there is no single element. No single element here. Everything's boxed. When everything's boxed, you just ignore that step. You go into the next step, you name your polyatomic ions. NH4 is ammonium, and I have this written on a piece of paper because I cannot spell it on my own. And then OH is another polyatomic ion from our polyatomic ion um, reference sheet, and OH is hydroxide. These two are the only ones that don't really follow along with Indian ATE as a polyatomic ion. All right, pause real quick. Try the fourth one. Hint, there's two polyatomic ions. All right, did you try it? I hope you tried it. Let's try it. Let's do it ourselves. So the first step is we need to um, box our polyatomic ions or ions. In a hint, there are word two. So NH4 is a polyatomic ion, and SO4 is a polyatomic as well. We don't need to worry about this two here. It don't matter. Ignore it. We named the first one, which we know from example three is ammonium. And then we name SO4, which is sulfate. And that is how you write names for polyatomic, ion, polyatomic compounds that involve polyatomic ions. I hope you learned something today. In the next video in the series, if you've watched all the stuff about chemical bonds, we are going to write formulas. And this does require you have that labeled periodic table with oxidation numbers. If you don't have that, go check out my video on periodic table so you can label your periodic table and be ready for that. But I'm Miss Norris, and I am out for this video.